What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to talk about HTTP verbs since it's very important when working with APIs. They are a huge factor in the attention of a request. With the HTTP verb, we need to tell the server how to handle the data on the client side. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and you want me to continue on creating tutorials, I have created a Patreon where you could get subscriptions and you will get benefits such as a private Discord group where we could help each other, polls in order to decide my next videos and way more. It's pretty difficult to maintain all of the questions that I'm getting through Instagram and YouTube and even though I'm trying to respond to all of you guys, the private group on Discord will be very beneficial for you guys since it's a community where we could all help each other. So if you are interested, click on the link in the description down below and let's just help each other out. Now instead of showing you all the HTTP verbs on the screen right now, let me give you an example. We all know what a CRUD application is. So create, read, update and delete. The way you handle data is usually looked at this way. Now for this example, I will use a movies endpoint. And whenever you want to read data, you will perform a GET request. Now the endpoint could go two ways. You could either get all resources, so all movies, and then the endpoint will be forward slash movies. But you could also get a single resource, so a single movie. So then we have the endpoint forward slash movies, forward slash inception, and inception will define the movie name. Obviously, the name of the movie can also be an ID, hash, slug, as long as it's unique. You could also perform a post verb. And with the post verb, you're going to create a new resource. So whenever you want to add new data from the client to the server, so whenever you want to add a new movie, you'll be using the post verb. Now the endpoint will be forward slash movies in order to create a new movie. Now whenever you want to update something, you will be either using the put or the patch verb. And I'm mentioning these two together because they are both used to update or modify data. But the idea behind it is a little bit different. Whenever you want to replace all data of a specific resource, you need to perform a put request. Whenever you want to update or modify a part of your request, you need to use the patch request. Now it's completely up to you which one you'd like to use, but I will try to use the right one at the right moment in this course. Whenever your intention is to update something, you're probably going to update a specific resource. So the endpoint will be forward slash movies, forward slash inception, because you want to pass in new data in your body in order to update something of the movie inception. Now the last request is the delete verb. Just like deleting in a CRUD application, you want to delete a specific resource based on the ID, name, slug, title, or whatever. So your endpoint will be forward slash movies, forward slash inception, but the HTTP verb is delete. Next to the HTTP verbs, there are a couple other things that I want to talk about and it's mainly best practices. Whenever you're trying to gather data about APIs on Google, you see a lot of differences in the endpoints. Some are plural and some are singular. So right on our screen, we have forward slash movie and forward slash movie forward slash one. And we have forward slash movies forward slash one. So which one is better? If you look at it as a non-programmer, you have one movie, but you could also have multiple movies. Now what I recommend you to do is to keep it consistent. And my recommendation is to use plural. So in our case, it's forward slash movies and it's forward slash movies forward slash one. In this case, and most cases in programming, consistency is key. Another very, very important point to cover are status codes in general, and not only in Laravel. Whether you're working with Java, c -sharp, or Python, the status codes are always the same. Now what is it? Whenever the server wants to respond to a client's request, it will do it with a status code. Now let me give you an example. Whenever you do a post request in order to create a new block item, you want some kind of feedback from the server, right? It will be nice to know if the resource has been created. And that's when status codes come into play. Now status codes have a range. The first number is fixed, so two, three, four, and five. And the last one can be changed. Now, whenever your status code starts with a two, it will basically tell the client that the request was successful. Now the 300 range will tell the client about redirections because redirects play a very important role in APIs. 
Think about this example. If someone is using an old endpoint, do you want the application to break? Well, no, right? You want to redirect them somehow. Whenever the server is dealing with client errors, it will print out the 400 range status. A good example might be someone that's trying to log in. If you enter the wrong data, the client can't fulfill your request. The 500 status code errors are statuses that deal with the server. What I want to do next is to show you a couple status codes that we will be using during this course. And the first one is code 200. 200 can be translated to OK. So basically, it will tell the client that the request was successful. You don't need to reinvent the wheel because these codes were created of HTTP and to solve a problem. So inside your code, you can do something if the status code is 200. Now the 201 code tells the client that one or more resources has been created. You might wonder what the difference is with 200 and 201. The 200 code will look at the 201 status, sees if the status has been created, so it can move on. Whenever you perform an update method, you do not need any data back. That's when the 204 comes into play. This code tells the client that the request has been fulfilled, but there is no content in the response. Now, if you want to move an endpoint, you'll be getting the 301 status code. This will tell the client that an endpoint has been moved to a new location. A good thing to keep in mind is that it will make it possible to change the HTTP verb for a request. Whenever you want to have a temporary redirect, you will be using the 307 code. The server will look for its new payload so it could redirect the client there. Since the redirect is temporary, the client will not save data about the redirect. Keep in mind that the 307 code will not let you change the HTTP verb unlike the 301. The redirect endpoint must match the HTTP verb. Obviously, if there is a temporary redirect, there is also a permanent redirect. And that is the 308 code. This also does not let you change the HTTP verb from its original endpoint. Now the 400 status code might be an error that you have seen before when browsing the web. It is very broad because it only tells the server that your request can't be processed and the reason will not be described. Whenever you try to authenticate and the credentials are wrong, the server will respond with a 401. And for the 403 status code, you're telling the client that the request could not be fulfilled because it's forbidden since the authorization is lacking. Not all users should be allowed to update other users' data, right? Whenever they try it, they will get a 403 code. There's also a 404, and this status will tell the client that the research does not exist. And this is actually a pretty common error. The 405 status code comes up whenever you're trying to create a request with an HTTP verb that is not allowed. So if you try to perform a GET verb when it's expecting a post, a 405 will be printed out. Now the last one in the 400 range is the 422, and this will tell the client that the data that has been sent is invalid. Now for the 500 range, we have 500 itself, and this is something that you might have seen before as well. And it's used as a generic error message when it's not possible to provide a more specific status code. If the server does not know how to handle the request, it will throw a 501 status code. But it could also be available in the future. And the last one that I want to show you is the 502, 503, and 504. The 502 says that the gateway received is invalid. The 503 is used whenever the server is down for maintenance. And with the 504, the server will act as a gateway and did not receive a response within a given period. Now that being said, this was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.